Today, we're gonna to talk about batteries. These are lithium ion batteries, and each cell has a voltage of 3.7 volts. The way I bought them, they look like this. If you short these out, they can heat up and cause some problems. So what I want to do today is make an 11.1 volt battery pack for the drone. So the main attraction is these molded caps that go on the top and bottom of each battery. Now what these do is they link together. So these bus bars go in between the screw terminals connecting each end of the battery cells together. So you can wire these in series or in parallel as many as you like in either direction to get the capacity or the voltage you want for your final battery pack. These have a few cool features on them. Uh, one is that these are color coded. You've got orange for your positive leads and black for your negative leads. This is really helpful when you can't see the actual terminals on your battery. The nice thing about this method is you can remove it easily and there's no residue and there's no permanence so you don't have to spot weld your batteries together to make a pack. There is a limited amount of current you can put through these uh, before you are going to want to switch to spot welding your batteries, but that means that you can carry spare batteries with you and swap them in and out of the pack, which is a really nice feature if you have a lot of cells and you want to go take the drone out on camping for a few days and you just don't have the resources to recharge all the batteries, you can just take them with you. These little protectors just kind of act as bumpers and keep things out of the electrified area. Sometimes it's hard to align these. It got a little cold, so I put on a sweater. So I'm gonna have this terminal be my master positive and this terminal will be my master negative. So to get the current to flow through all these batteries, I need to bridge these gaps and these gaps. Now we're just going to check the voltage and make sure we have everything hooked up properly. Negative terminal and positive terminal. 12.5 volts. So these batteries actually charge up to a fully charged voltage of about 4.2 volts per cell. Uh, so that's why I'm getting a voltage that's higher than my goal of 11.1. .1. A normal 11.1 .1 volt battery pack will actually charge to above that voltage. I'm going to need some ring terminals. These aren't the cleanest ring terminals in the world, but they'll do. Yeah. Sponge. So I'm going to crimp these ring terminals onto the positive and negative wires and then the other side I'm going to solder them to this female T connector. I don't know, like yay long. Looks good to me. I forgot a tool. Whoa! This is my grandpa's stripper, and he handed it down to me in, a, in his, you know, his toolboxes. And I opened it up, and I was like, "Wow, my grandpa's stripper is actually pretty new." I don't know why I threw these away. I still needed them. All right, I hate crimping. I'm gonna try this. I heard a buddy say once that you're supposed to put a little solder on the. Uh, on the leads before you put them in a crimp, so let's try that.
That did the trick. Good solid connection. Okay. Never forget to put your insulation on before you solder. So you have to cut it off and restart. You know what? I need to get a freaking vise in here at some point, but before I do that, I can just use a clamp, I guess. The old clamp. The clamp. Give him the clamps. All right, all soldered up. Last step is the shrink wrap. Boom. All right, master negative right there. So I should have made these wires different lengths, huh? Twelve point five for golden. If you watched the previous video, you'll know why this motor is missing. It's because I broke it. Before we get to replacing that, we'll fire this thing up with our 18650 battery. Hey, look at that. Throttle lock is disengaged. Beautiful. Hell yeah. So now I can power this thing using the literal boxes of 18650s I have in this garage. <laughs> That's it for now, folks. <laughs> <laughs>